Hi right, guys, thought I'd do an update today. I haven't done one for a while. Um, so I'll be in multiple directions because I've, I've just got to expand this out a bit. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is I think fear. Fear will be an important bit. I think I'll start with that. A lot of the stuff we have around us is based on fear. The reason we don't speak up, or a lot of people don't speak up, is because of fear. A lot of this has been pushed around things like where people say Islamophobia or things. These things that are introduced as a shut up and put up um, solution. It, and it's the solution to the problem. The problem is that you're not allowed to actually discuss things. What you need to understand is this push is going to continue. Um, right now, we've got the worst government we could have had, uh, in my personal opinion. I don't think they're going to do any benefit to the UK. Um, they've gone straight into pay uh, extra funds to those that voted them in. But my view on that is, isn't that corruption? My personal view, um, that if you're guaranteeing sort of people being getting, given pay rises if they vote for you, shouldn't that be corruption? Because um, in theory it's a bribe, in my mindset. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, and they still go and strike anyway. The reality is, if you look at the people, they're, they seem to be the worst type of people. I look at Angela Rayner, she was on a morning broadcast after the Southport ish, uh, incident um, and she's got bright gold glitter on her eyes and I just thought circus clown or prostitute, It's I don't know anybody else who wears that except for maybe strippers. Um, but she's like, I don't know, she's like as if her parents never encouraged her to grow up. It just seems particularly weird. Um, Starmer seems to be, he sounds like the sort of guy that thought he was important, wanted everybody to listen, and he spent his entire life where everyone just thought, I'm not listening to words you're saying, you're an absolute idiot. And now he's been given the stage, and now he's proving it. Um, so I'm, I, I am expecting things to get worse in the UK. But the reason I'm bringing all this sort of stuff up is everything reaches a tinderbox moment. This is why when people talk about the riots being a pinnacle moment and causing change, it hasn't changed a thing. People are still annoyed. Still, um, we're still getting fatalities around incidents throughout the UK. It's made no difference at all. The reality is, what will make a difference is when people that work for a living have no benefit to actually go into work. And they're working really hard on getting to there. When you flood the country with people that have little to offer, often little to no education, um, dislike the country, see it as just a place to freeload you're gonna have a strain on the economy because let's face it they all got to be housed somewhere they've all got to be paid for and if you're not going to work who's going to pay for them it's got to come out of the working people there's no there's no magic fund governments don't have funds people have the funds people are the ones that make the money that make the world go round. if people stop working the economy gets worse because there's less money flowing in the economy and less taxation and it just becomes problematic you look at the cost of rents i, I seen something earlier where somebody was I think it was eight miles outside Manchester. It was £750 rent. And then you start building up the cost of living there. And it works out as something like £2,200 a month when you factor in a car to go to work. Um, what do you go? Car to go to work, your food expenses, all the general stuff. You're not in living, you're existing. And if you, get, if you look down it, you sort of go, well, I could be unemployed in 
pretty much in exactly the same place and just let everyone else pay for me. Well, imagine if people like you and me actually thought that way. Now, I've got to admit, it doesn't benefit me because my home's Spain. There's no point me sitting on my backside at home. But it does invite people to not work. Um, not that I'm encouraging people not to work because my view is people should work. Um, and it's not just about financial gain. It's not about control. It's about self-worth. Because work doesn't mean that you have to work for others. Work could be that you provide information or something to the community of high value, etc., etc. So it is a broad version. But at the same time, you may be better off invested, not working, and focusing on, say, learning Python, learning a new tech skill, developing your skills, then putting all your efforts into someone else's pocket so that someone that never paid a thing in the system is living off your back. Now, I have the same detestment of people in the UK that live off my back, so it's not racism, it's not a dislike of certain nations or anything else. I hate parasites, I do. And I do get people um, that have disabilities, etc. I'm not putting them in the same category they have reasons not to work. I get the, under, the understanding that many people have not had the right opportunities, um, but you create your opportunities. I get the fact that people can be so demotivated because the only jobs that they could do is press work or something that involves pressing buttons or something, and there's not many of those jobs around anymore because a robot can do that. Um, this is one of the problems of upskilling everything because for me those jobs have a place in the community to give self-worth and self-worth is important for everybody i don't know if it still exists in Worcester. there used to be a place called and um what's it called no it's um ah oh, something enterprise it used to be i, I can visualize where it was but it was a Sort of, I think it was council funded type in the enterprise. But but the point is, a lot of the people that worked there had Down syndrome and other things. The guy that used to do a lot of the woodworking stuff that we, we needed only had one arm, for example. Um, but he could use a CNC machine and things like that. So they had tasks down there, such as putting pens in envelopes um, for, for marketing. Um, these I used to get. We used to get them to cut the um, with the CNC. They'd route the edges. I can't remember what it's called now. It's at the bottom of furniture. Um, so basically, it's the nice trim you get around the bottom. Um, but they would they would run those in the CNC machine. So there a lot of tasks that were mundane, um, not fantastic. I think they used to also do. Um, Oh my, I can tell I'm tired today. Um, the card, what's that big card company? Um, very famous and they do like good like Christmas movies and positive stories. You know, they do, they have their own channel that's always got positive stories. Uh, oh, it sounds like home something. But basically they put things like the Christmas cards and birthday cards in the envelopes. Things like that. Very basic stuff that needs to be done by hand. I mean, I think it can be, it probably is all machine done now, but let's face it, marketing's moved on as well. It's all online now. Um, but the fact is, Hallmark. I think they did Hallmark cards as well. But there's a lot of stuff there where the guys, like with Down syndrome or whatever, a lot of life is about motivation and having something going on. And it doesn't matter if that's somebody that's got Down syndrome, somebody that's been made redundant, somebody that's got, you know, everybody needs something to get up for in the morning. A lot of these guys seen this as a proper job. So they clock in and everything else and they got their pay and, you know, it was important to the individuals. It's important to the community. It's important to create these types of jobs. Um, so I'm a keen, keen believer on that. So, so the fact is, I, I'm a strong believer in generating work, even if it's not for financial gain. 
um, because some of these things could be done automatically, but then you go, well, to be fair, how much does it cost for little Jimmy to sit at home with a care worker watching him, then actually being in a um, factory environment with, with a lot of his friends, putting envelopes in, uh, cards in envelopes all day with his job and everything else. Giving him a wage, which would probably be constitute the same as maybe his benefits, um, and not needing a caregiver, because that wage can then get, actually be used wisely in the, the work environment. Um, I could see that being a cost saving mechanism and of value to the community. Um, I've gone off on a tangent here, but the point being is, for me, everyone should be offering something up for the community in some way, or the economy, or some. A lot of people we're getting now don't offer nothing. Um, now, I'm going to speak broadly because I've been to a lot of countries over the years. Um, a lot of these countries, these people will be given money. Um, we used to have problems with some of these people because they don't want to work. But they may be forced to go to work. A lot of the UK with the job centre may force people to go to work. And you'll get people who will try and create an issue so that they would threaten you as a company because you're a foreign company with foreign people, you know, foreign owners, white people. Um, they would threaten, they would go at the Ministry of Employment and stuff and make up things to create an issue. And it's because they don't want to work. And if you're sitting in these environments and listen to how people see the UK, you will often see them with this vision of, let's call it the 1980s, um, of everything on a silver platter for free. It's getting more difficult. So you look at it and why do you think crime in that's going up, violent crimes going up? Why? Mr. Whatever has travelled thousands of miles to get to the UK, thinks he's going to get a house, get everything paid for, living the dream to find things have changed. He may have had to live under a bridge, may have had to live in a hotel, may have had to, um, what's it, milling, where they all hang around places, milling about. Got no incentive to be there, no value to the community, nothing really motivating them to become part of the community. Because that's one of the things that people say, well, people don't integrate. Well, there's nothing integrating them. The communities aren't integrating them. We're not integrating them because the majority of them are there illegally. They're not supposed to be integrated. They're supposed to be sent away. Um. So what's my point? Well, these are all factors that for the British person, when I say British person, it doesn't matter what colour your skin is, you should be concerned that this has a detrimental effect on your environment, your money in your pocket, your society, and the changes that are occurring, I mean, Starmer's only, he's testing the water from what I'm seeing, um, will lead to some very negative changes, which will not be beneficial to anybody that belongs in the UK. Belongs means you're part of the UK. You're part of society. You're integrated into society. You see yourself as British. You are British. <laughs> Um, you want to be British because my view is if you're not one of those you shouldn't be there now the good thing is a lot of these problems are going to boil you don't have to do anything with it and one of the things I want to say today this is what I want to talk about in the positive bit is you don't have to be constantly watching this stuff getting absorbed into it it's going to run its course it will run its course i mean i've got to admit my spending power is reduced considerably um because of the inflated taxation and everything else in the uk the cost of living is horrendous there's no real justification for it they can go brexit can go this 
I think there's a lot of um, artificial inflation myself. Um, however, there is always a silver lining if you look for the silver lining. This is mine, Spain, escapism. <laughs> Um, I get in here at silly o'clock in the morning, as soon as that plane lands, doors open, I'm home. All the crap of the UK just filters out. Um, I get home, I, I get back into the, the weekend mode, do a few of these videos, spend time with the family, enjoy dinner, get in the moment, the now, the current the specifics of you this noise stuff will continue don't worry about it just push it to one side leave it which this is what's weird when people are saying they want rid of star I get rid of star da, da, da. and then people are going oh yeah but we have a democratic process he's got to stay for four years or whatever well it's one or the other either way leave it to one side You've already got politicians fighting amongst themselves. Leave them to do it for now. Although these things can have a direct impact on you, you cannot change anything at the moment. You've got to allow Starmer to fail, and he will, massively. Um, what you need to focus on is yourself. So the fear factor for a lot of people, this is why he's gone down the route of attacking people for freedom of speech. And the media, uh, if you look at the news articles around people being jailed read into the articles not just the headings because the headings are very manipulated you can look into the articles themselves and you'll see that some of these people have previous convictions etc etc although there is a two-tier system in my mindset and along with looking at how people um, are treated um, the reality is you can't beat that system at the minute. What you've got to do is keep yourself out of it. You've got to let things run the course. I do think pushing the economy will reap some changes. Um, it's just it's just history repeating itself. Now. The fear factor on that things is where you start worrying about what you're saying. My view is just think about what you're saying. You don't have to stop thinking. You don't have to, um, you don't have to change that much. They're trying to make you think that you have to. Um, it's like DEI, what, diversity, equality, and inclusive thing. That's dying a death. Uh, it's been proven in so many ways that it, it, it's a bad idea it just doesn't work because it's not based on unit of output so it's not based on getting the best of anything um a lot of businesses have been hammered because of their going down the woke route and everything else you know you look at disney it's it's destroying itself you look at netflix how much garbage they pump out um then you've got what was it? I think Amazon's got a black white king now. What the hell's that about? Um, the, yeah, black black English king. Did I say black white king? Black English king. Well, it'd still be right because it wouldn't shouldn't be black anyway. What I can't understand with this stupid stuff is why don't they do stuff on African kings, like you know the Zulus and things like that. There was enough history in. The, the demographics they want to focus on but they don't seem to do it they want to rewrite everything around us it's like rewriting the Brothers of Grimm that their, their folk stories are um, European why would what is this mental state these people must be in um, that for me is not promoting anything positive because you're trying to re what, blackwash instead of whitewash things out um, but at the same time all these countries have their own stories their own fables their own histories and they don't bother their backside it's like the the writers are too lazy to even investigate 
if you go to the Philippines, there is so much superstition there. There's things like the whack wax and all. And there's massive amounts of stories and stuff out there. Um, so there's a, it's not as if there's enough material to actually go. You know what? I've um, I've looked into. It. We've got. We'll do something on. Like I said, the Philippines. We, you, they've got these. Um, I think the. I think is it the whack wax with a long tongue? It's to do with it steals the babies out of the pregnant women's stomachs and stuff. There was enough stories there, right? All these countries will have stories. All of them. They do not need to rewrite the Brothers Grimm. They do not need to write, rewrite um, things like Cinderella or anything else. They can actually find stories. Now, the interest in them may be as poor as um, the remake of the uh, Snow White with the dwarfs that weren't dwarfs, etc. But guess what? That just tells you that nobody's interested in this stuff. If our people are interested, great. But I'm really confused on where they're expecting things to go because it just seems like they seem to pump money into stupid ideas then complain when they fail or do it again and do it again and do it again. Like the Olympics, all peculiar. Don't understand it. It's all gone a weird way. That Australian... Um, I, I'm not going to call her a break dancer, but her whole show, clown show, overshadowed the people that were actually doing break lines. The media coverage was focused on what the hell was that? But then you look at the fact that she created, I believe, the governing body. She created her, her husband was the judge and the coach. And then people go, oh yeah, it's a free holiday. She's having a free, free holiday. You're having a laugh, aren't you? What about all the money that they get? You know, the funding that goes into this stuff. Look what people get paid. I mean, I seen it when the Paralympics start to develop. You start thinking, hang on, you're now developing all these um, Olympians with money. Where's the money coming from? All these new people with their coaches their teams it's it's just cash generation it's not quality and i may get some of that but let's face it look at the the paris olympics and los angeles were given both at the same time why was that because i suspect is they're worried about the one their lays took now, that if they'd actually followed the same process as usual, there may not have been any nominations because of lack of interest in it. Doesn't that show you how downgraded this stuff is? We are in an environment that is downgrading everything around us, whether it's religion, whether it's sport, whether, you know, and the weird thing is, it's on purpose. But these things, like the Olympics, they're not bothered if you watch it or not. Let's face it, nobody's talked about how many people actually went and watched or whatever. They just talk about the Last Supper piece or whether it was the Last Supper because they seem to change their mind depending on who they're talking to and when. Um, that, that Australian false break dancer. Um, but in reality, was anybody actually talking about people who watched the events? Who turned up at the events? What was going on? I didn't see any of it. For me, it just sounds like they're just after the money to pay for these things. Interesting. Um, but the devaluation of everything is all part and parcel of this. The devaluation means that what you valued and is your ethics and moral compass is being eroded. This is why I'm going to get into the positive stuff because this is all like, oh, this is all negative. The point being is there is nothing saying you need to erode this. There is nothing saying that you can't pass on the positive message. There isn't anything saying that you can, uh, you have to accept what these vultures and parasites and hypocrites and whatever you want to call them are doing. For a start, I'm not religious, but I have my own ethics, I have my own standards, I have my own codes. Those are things I live by, and I choose to live by them. 
It's a bit like the work environment. Although my work environment can be quite toxic, it's not bothering me. Why is it not bothering me? Because I can see straight through individuals. I can see the people that are narcissistic, we run a HR, etc. They're weak, they're incompetent, they're relying on trying to create issues to cover up the fact they haven't done their job for a long period of time. I'm not concerned whether my job lasts tomorrow or whatever. I couldn't care less. Because if you're that concerned in where you're working, your work is controlling you. You need to understand if that's happening and you're stressing about it, you're worried about it, you need to re-evaluate where you want to be because the fear factor is controlling you. You know, it's like when companies go, well, we're all going to have to pull a late one. No, don't have to pull a late one at all. You can ask me. I might do it. I dictate it. No way. Not a chance. <laughs> um, so the point being is, assess, evaluate, and make the changes. Work, I've started focusing. Um, I, do my, I still do my 40 hours, don't get me wrong. But where... I'd be thinking about things outside of work to make the, you know, say a complex task, trying to understand it in a deeper level. I've focused on other things. So for example, for it's still in the build environment, don't get me wrong, but it's it's more I'm trying to enhance my own knowledge base. So working on digital tree uh, digital twins, uh, working on things like uh, Python, gonna need to develop some apps, working on um BIM, working hard on my degree to get that wrapped up, um, aligning my next courses, deciding where I want to go next with my career. Those are my focus, not the job. Now the problem is, the problem is a lot of people get wrapped up on the problems in work. And this is one of the things I was bringing about the video about the empathy piece and, you know, these people aren't empathetic, they could be uh, narcissistic, um, have a lot of nepotism, so you're never going to get promoted because they look after each other, because what you find is incompetence hires incompetence because you want to surround yourself with people at the same level because you make them sacrificial at the same time, they're not going to outperform you. So you, you create this little bubble. Where for me, best thing for me is people that I've trained or whatever is the outperform me and move on. So I know we're on multiple directions here, but the, the politics side, don't keep letting it drag you down. Um, you know, when I say that, you probably think, well, Matt, do, are you including yourself? No, where, where I knew, know I spend too much time is actually watch too much. And that's why I'm switching that off. I spend a lot of time with the lotus eaters and things like that. But I've started to see there's too much regurgitation, too much repetitive stuff. And there's, there's, they're not talking solutions. The solutions to a problem is, is the fundamentals. If there's no solutions, just park them. You know, it's a bit like um, the whole writing, double standards, two-tier tier, uh, care and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And what have you done about it? Nothing. What changes are we expected? Nothing. Um, if you're a reform, you've got Farage doing his changes at the moment where he's on about changing the party and all that sort of stuff. Okay, fine. Crack on. Don't really need to know. His focus will be for the next election in four years' time. Conservatives, I don't see them repairing themselves, so they're sort of parked. So you, Starmer seems to be heading towards a bad place. Leave them to it, because we, we need to fall down that bit further to actually get people off their backsides and to go and vote and actually try and make the changes. Farage needs to up his game and actually put stuff together properly um, if people want Farage in. And I'll be honest with you, I don't like Farage, but... It's a bit like Trump. He may not be my best choice. He, he may not be the best person, but they're currently the best choices at the minute, unfortunately. Um, there's a lot of stuff Trump's done I don't agree with, but at the same time, I do think he, he'll be beneficial to America. So we'll see where it's going. 
because let's face it, some people may go, no, 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 Camilla, this, and that, that. It's like, look, I've seen this stuff that's out there. And if you're thinking you, you're seeing something I can't see, <laughs> let's put it that way. To say if you look at Starman and think that, that guy does a great job, it's probably because you had a, uh, a pay rise. Um, but bearing in mind, any pay rise will be offset by inflation and other stuff that he's going to create, like his 10% on the fuel that's just gone up. Um, I just want to put this in perspective as well because there's always other options. See, my biggest cost are... Um, it's not costs. My biggest... Yeah, my, my way of life is Spain. It's not the UK. So I limit my costs in the UK. So though I've got a car there, it's a tiny little Peugeot 105, I think it's 105, 106. Um, I rent a room, I don't have a house. I don't pay council tax, all that other nonsense. I limit my costs there to the minimum. My life is Spain. Now, the average house in the UK, they're saying that the the energy bills will be, what's that, 1,700 or something a year. Now, to put that in perspective, in Spain, I have air conditioning on all year round. And it's not in one room, it's in multiple rooms. Um, so heat and cooling, I have both. Because in the summer, it's hot. In the winter, it's cold. My energy bills are cheaper than the UK. Because I do get people going, well, the electric bill's high. Yeah, but that's because we don't have any gas in Spain. You know, a lot of people don't have gas. That's why you might think the electric's higher. But you've got to understand if you're paying a gas bill as well, um, I'm paying far less compared to you guys. The amount you're paying in council tax is horrendous compared to Spain. I think we pay... How much is our um, summer? Is it about 200 a year or something like that? Yeah, the you know for the bins and stuff. Uh, yeah, about yeah, so about two hundred a year, not a month, a year, and the bins are collected regularly. Even if somebody dumps a sofa there, it's gone. It, they do a fantastic job. The line markings are done regularly. Bins are good. They jet wash and clean the streets because um, not only do they clean you know jet wash off the markets when they have the market days it's also scented as well so it smells nice as well they do a lot here um the only blight on the landscape at the moment will be uh graffiti and even that i have actually talked directly to the mayor about the issue and the problem he's got is that most of these buildings are private if it's on a state-owned um entity you'll get it sorted. We even have a poop patrol here where the guys go around on uh, scooters um, with like a vacuum cleaner to pick up dog crap. Because, and I've got to admit, it's the older Spaniards with their little bloody dogs that do it. Um, they, the fact is, they care about the community. They work on the community. We get a lot out of it. UK's not doing any of that stuff. There all seems to be an excuse. But I think it was, is it one pound in every five pound in your council tax actually council pensions? Think about that. That's one fifth of everything you give them that they're spending on themselves. And that doesn't include everything else they get up to. So cost of living, evaluate that. You may be sat on assets in the UK. If your house is worth half a million and you're doing a job where you're virtually making no money on it, why are you there? Look at how old you are and assess whether you sell up and bugger off to another country and enjoy life. Have a look at investment funds, stick it in investments, and you may find that, you, say, a half a million generates at least 50,000 a year. Um, you get somewhere in Bali or wherever you want to be, uh, silly rent a clock, you know, dirt cheap rent, um, and you could even have house helpers and stuff and still be living a better life there are so many other options out there the big problem we have is we've become focused on what we're told to do which is have a job do this do that the biggest money i made in my life is when i haven't actually had a job i've sat and worked out ideas like the call center 
that was making up to my profit was up to seventeen thousand pounds a week. Uh, sorry, seventeen thousand dollars a week in the good in, in good weeks. That's how you'll see a lot of people think about wealth differently. I know I focused on work a lot too much, but the reason being is we needed to get a lot of this house, um, the mortgage down, the refurbishment done, and we've got through that now where I'm, I've got about £40,000 left to pay on the mortgage, which is nothing. Um, we haven't to buy a new car at the moment. That's just cost me another €17,000. But at the same time, it's all good. The environment we're in is problematic. The one about this monkeypox nonsense now as well. Um, and I've got to admit, some of that's starting to stir up because people are worried about another pandemic being pulled on us. Um, we'll see where that goes. But at the same time, if you constantly worry and live in fear, A, they'll do it to you. But B, you're not thinking about how to get out of this stuff. The politics stuff, park it. Spend your time um, on developing yourself. Spend your time thinking outside the box, trying to do things better, trying to work out other ways of making money. Focus on your personal development. Focus on your your, your health, your, you know, mentally as well as um, exercise. Focus on your dieting cutting out alcohol, drugs, whatever, you know, if you've got some, uh, what do you call it, vices, nip them in the bud, take control of them. Because it is important, because if you don't do it, nobody will. It was quite interesting this morning, I'd seen somebody, there was a lot of negative stuff, there was two people in a photo, they said they're the same age, and they've got a guy with a six pack, um, and a guy that's got a big beer belly. And then you're seeing the two comments where people are going, well, another fat, so blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I look at it this way. Both of them are living different lifestyles. If they're happy, who cares? It's no, nobody's business anyway. The guy that's, you know, because you could do it two ways. Guy's fat, so, oh, he drinks too much. He, he doesn't spend enough time um, doing exercise, blah, blah, blah. But you could also say, well, he's probably spending too much time with his family. He's, he, you know, probably very family orientated. Spends a lot of time on the sofa where the kids are jumping all over him. Um, hence, he doesn't spend all day in the gym, etc., etc. Could be that way. In the other way, you know, the other guy could be the guy lives on kale, spends too much time in the mirror, um, spends all his spare time at the gym, doesn't really have much of a life going on. Or the fact is, he likes to compete in sports, likes to do uh, uh, exercising feels that he's you know achieved what he wants in life etc etc as long as both are happy to hell with everybody else and that's the space you need to get into if you're not already to hell with everybody else you need to be happy where you are politics go into it stuff that's going on with all the bloody knife crime and stuff in london leave them with it leave them with it it's going to deteriorate it's going to get worse but if you're not working in London, don't worry about it. If you are working in London, do what I do. Limit what you do on the tube. Start driving. Just say it's not safe to be in the streets or whatever. Um, it's a difficult one to argue against these days. Because um, I've got to admit, I don't like going on buses. Because every time I go on a bus, there's some nutter on there. Every single time. And it was quite funny. I was with um, Chris Chris Afas, the guy I work with, um, where, where I am now, a couple of years back, but he's, he's moved on another job. And I said, I don't like going on buses because there's always a nutter. And we went on the bus, and guess what? Nutter comes on. Every single time. I don't know what it is. Buses attract them like a bloody magnet. Um, but you need to understand, don't let stuff pull you down. What you need to do is focus on how, what lifts you up and what steers you in a better direction. And another important thing is not to be too harsh on yourself. A lot of the stuff around personal development offers falsehoods. And as if you do this, this will fix all your problems in life. No, it won't. Changing countries, like I was, I'll say, changes perspective. But it doesn't mean that you're going to fix your solutions. It, it fix all your problems. 
Because it's like when people say, oh, Philippine is a bird. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, look in the mirror, mate. It's probably you that's the problem. There's a lot of people I know that have got fantastic wives and they're absolute twats. They, 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 they gripe and whine that the person left them because they, you know, it was because of green cards. And no, you were probably a twat. And the, the other side of that being, if it was because of a green card, you could have noticed some of the bloody problems early on if you were a little bit smarter. Because most of the time, you ask myself, or you ask somebody that's been in the Philippines a long time, they can recognize traits and stuff that you will ignore if they told them to your face. That's the reality. I've done it so many times where you can see gold diggers and whatever, and you can advise, they don't listen. They come back a year later, after, say, they moved to America or whatever, and say, yeah, you were right, she was a gold digger, da, 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 da. Yeah, but I could have told you that a year earlier. In fact, I did. <laughs> Responsibility and ownership is down to you. If you make a bad decision, you made the bad decision. Stop trying to pass it off as other people. It's, 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 it's about being a grown-up. Personal development is always about looking inwards as well as outwards. More inwards than outwards. The inwards bit is reflective and also understanding it's where the so i got my uh my google just started interrupting there um you've got to look inwards as well as outwards and the reason i say that look inwards is if your workplace is dragging you down making you unhealthy whatever looking inwards is looking beyond whatever the issue you know maybe somebody's narcissistic maybe it's that because you've got to look at and think do i need this job am i stopping at the pub on the way home because i'm feeling depressed is it creating problems in my household is it that you know that's the inward bit going outward is how you're going to fix it you need a new job need a new career path the job's only a minimum wage job so why the hell do you care you can get another minimum wage swap the careers do what do something but the key to it, it is about the decision making and you control those decisions. And the thing is that goes on with relationships. It goes on with finance. It goes on with any problems or positives in your life is controlling the information and the outcomes through taking responsible action. Not everything goes your way. My wife will tell you, one of the things I do when I have a really bad day is I'll go to bed. Because for me, I go to bed tomorrow, it's a new day. I'm not stressing about it yesterday. I'm not annoyed about it. I've moved on. And it doesn't matter if I lost a hundred thousand pounds on a bad decision or whatever. It's gone, money's gone, decision's gone. I'm moving on. T today, we're starting again. You gotta have that mindset. And it's not a positive mental mindset because a lot of the way that people project that stuff is idiotic. You can't constantly be positive when things are slamming you down. What you've got to understand is like moaning. Moaning is only relevant if you're moaning with friends. The fact that they wiped all the pub industry out in the UK removed the moaning environment for many people where you'd meet up with the people that you work with or people that are just in the pub that you know in your neighborhood or just in the pub itself where people will gripe about what's going on in their lives, going around at work and they get, that's their, that used to be their therapy, being wiped out. The reality is you may have to do a lot of this stuff yourself. You may not have people to lean on, but also be aware the people you're leaning on is don't moan too much. Listen as well as give, but also if somebody is constantly um, problematic, understand that you need to tell them as well. Enough's enough. You know, you either need to make the changes or stop telling me about it. You know, if because the most problematic people I know I've been making the same mistakes for over 20 years. Um, and a lot of time, I don't listen to them anymore because they don't want to change. I've tried to help, try to do what I can. I don't see it as being, you know, I'm not defeated. It's just that the energy I'm putting in is getting nothing back because if they, they constantly spiral down and go back to where you're beginning, putting all that extra time and effort in, you start going, you know what? get yourself together 
I've given you the platform, give me the tools, give me a pathway out of it. If you're not willing to make the changes, I'm not going to keep going over this. I'll help you when you ask for help or need help, but I'm not going to keep putting the, the same level of energy in. You got to think about yourself sometimes. You got to put yourself forward. You got to develop yourself. You got to understand that you can only take so much crap in a day. Because you don't want to be ground down. And if you're ground down, look inwards and then start looking outwards. Project how you're going to change things. Um, thank that. I think that's this one. Not much else to explain on that in this video. But if you've got anything you want to discuss, put it in the comments and we'll go over it. Um, but yeah, you probably know it's in very pro Spain. Because to be fair, cost of living is cheaper. People go, oh, the wages are cheaper. Yes, it is. But I've nearly paid my house off in, was it three years now, my love? Mm -hmm. Three years. I think that's that's okay. Live by the beach. I don't gloat about stuff. This is one of the things I try and play things down because my life's pretty good. You know, work may be upwards and downwards, but... I've got much more positive things going on in life. And that's the other point I want to make is if you haven't, start finding some. Start creating them. Start developing them. And you can often go back to when you were younger because there was stuff that you wanted to do and then you may have gone off on a different path because maybe your dad worked at a factory, you got your job at the factory and you're in a job you hate. But what did you want to do before then? That may be where you want to be. One of the things I'm doing at the moment is learning to play the guitar. Something I wanted to do, never had the time to do, didn't think I had the patience to do it, um, couldn't understand music that well, but I'm spending time learning now because I want to do it. It's something I should have done years ago. I should have made time. I should have carried a guitar in the back of the car when I was working, when I'm stuck in a bloody hotel and got hours to do stuff in. But now, it's a lesson learned. And there's one for you. If you're working away from home and want to do something, get yourself a guitar, get yourself uh, keyboards or whatever. And you go, oh, what about the noise? You can get them with headphones. You get a nice little lamp. Um, they normally have a an output to stick your headphones on and you can listen to yourself when nobody has to hear you in the hotel. But the key to everything is move it forward, keep it positive. And like I said, I'm not a false positive of everything's everything's awesome. We're not in Legoland. We're in reality. We've got a lot of problems going on. It's, it's cutting through the crap that we need to do. Thanks for watching.